Hi there! Over the next few minutes, we're going to run through how to design web and mobile app prototypes. What exactly are web and mobile app prototypes? Prototypes are a replica of your product without the code. They incorporate much or all of the final UI design and interactions your product will have, while also communicating its core functionalities to clients, developers, and other project stakeholders. Another plus to prototypes is that you can carry out user testing to check that your final product will provide the user experience you intended it to have. Types of prototypes. There are different types of prototypes according to the degree of fidelity you want to capture. The degree of fidelity refers to how closely a prototype represents the final product. One, paper prototypes. These are sketches of a product screens and they are the most basic prototype. Two, low fidelity prototypes. These focus only on fundamental aspects like basic screen layout, element spacing, and positioning. Three, high-fidelity prototypes. These include more advanced interaction and UI design. The benefits of prototyping. Designing a prototype of your website or app before it's coded has many benefits. They help you avoid expensive reworks by revealing potential misunderstandings before coding. They accelerate time to market by speeding up development. Furthermore, prototypes lead to more user-friendly products improving product adoption and user engagement rates. Tasks to do before prototyping. Carry out user research. When you're designing a product, you're not really designing it for the client, but for the user. So make sure you carry out the appropriate user research beforehand. Find out who you're designing for and if there's a need for your product. Create user personas based on this data and use them to inform your product's design and functionality. Gather project requirements. Listen carefully to your client's ideas. Present the client with your user research data and together, determine a list of core functionalities your product should have. Devise an information architecture. Decide on the order in which information will be presented inside your product. This will help inform your product's information architecture. You can represent this by designing a basic navigational flow between your product screens. How to design a prototype step-by-step. Step. Start with a low fidelity prototype. Start simple. Build your basic screen layouts focusing on basic element outlines, sizing, and positioning. Don't worry too much about visual design at this stage. Just pin down a basic navigation flow to test the waters. Add interaction design. At this stage, start to work on more advanced interactions, such as scrolling, tabbed menus, accordions, parallax scrolling, micro interactions, and more. For example, imagine you're prototyping a form and you want the user's email address to be saved and appear on an account page. Your high fidelity prototype should represent this interaction. Add advanced UI design. It's when you move on to advanced UI design that you'll start to implement more branding features, such as color palettes, color gradients, typography, along with refined element spacing and positioning. At this stage, you'll also switch placeholders for real images and lorem ipsum for real text. Prototyping forms. Form design has a high impact on usability, so you want to get this right in your prototype. Ideally, a high fidelity prototype will include interactive forms with conditional actions and inline validations. An example of this would be an error message displaying if anything other than an email address is entered into a field. Data visualization. Finally, a high fidelity prototype should allow for any type of data visualization the final product will have. This might take the form of lists along with card and grid displays while allowing interactions such as filtering and sorting data. Data visualization in a prototype helps demonstrate product functionality to stakeholders and developers, as well as provide user testing opportunities. So what are the key takeaways? Prototyping saves time and money. Prototyping before coding helps prevent costly and time-consuming problems down the line. They also ultimately lead to more user-friendly products. Go from low fidelity to high fidelity. Although we recommend starting simple and working your way up to higher fidelities, 
The truth is that there's no one size that fits all. The right place to start will depend on your team and organization. Prototypes boost collaboration. For best results, adopt an iterative approach to prototyping. Design, test, iterate, and perfect. Fail fast and weed out the bad ideas quickly. Above all else, prototyping is a collaborative experience. They break up silos and help keep everyone on your team on the same page. That's it, folks. What are you waiting for? Get prototyping today and test out those ideas.